as we saw in the first video on the cylinder castings, the covers come in two forms. We've got the plain and simple for the front covers, because there's no need for the rod to pass through. And then for the rear covers, we've got the block for the gland. So that will need to be considered when machining. On the drawings, Don does give a dimension for the outer dimension. One and seven eighths of an inch, which in my language works out at somewhere around 47 and a half mil. I'm going to make mine slightly smaller because I'm going to make them to suit the cylinder blocks. And I've measured the maximum thickness of this section and it's around about six millimeters. So with the bore diameter of 33, I need to add on six plus six, another 12 mil to give the diameter that will suit these blocks. Of course, they're not both exactly the same, but I will make the cylinder covers to the same. So mine will be at 45 millimeter diameter. To machine the covers, I'm gonna do the inside face of each. Each one does have a stub to enable it to be held in the three jaw chuck. So I can machine off the inside face with a register. So I'll do the two front covers first, because they're nice and simple. And then I'll move on to the two rear covers, because they've got a little bit more to deal with. So I need to consider both the hole for the piston rod and the detail for the glands. Before we put the covers into the three jaw chuck, I do need to clean up the stub that I'll be using to hold them with. These are far from parallel, quite tapered, larger diameter coming out to a smaller diameter, as one would expect for a casting. And as such, I think the three jaw would not grip it very firmly. So I'm just gonna throw each one in the four jaw, roughly center it up, pretty much by eye, and then just turn this diameter so that I've got a clean surface on which to clamp it into the three jaw chuck. With the stub cleaned up, I use the three jaw chuck to hold the cover and clean up the inside face and also turn the diameter. The diameter is arbitrary at this moment. It will need to be brought down to size. I think this is round about 60 mil. As I zeroed the top slide against this diameter, I use a top slide to roughly indicate the register diameter. I then turn down to this mark, facing off just under the required depth. I'm looking for 0.8 mil, so I take this down to about 0.75 mil. To finish off the register, I measure it and now start taking the cuts on the x-axis rather than facing down to the diameter. For the final cut, as well as turning the register to diameter, I also go in the full depth on the x-axis, so 0.8 millimeters, and then traverse the top slide back outwards to put the finish cut on the face. And a quick test shows that the left cylinder at 33.04 millimeter diameter is a good fit, but the right cylinder at 33.02 millimeters doesn't fit. I think that's a pretty damn good result. Although I turned the stub on the back of the rear cylinder covers, the more I think about it, the less I'm inclined to use the stub to hold it in the chuck. The reason why is when I turn this face, which will be the inside face of the cylinder cover, I will also drill and ream the hole for the piston rod. And that's quite an important combination that the drilling and reaming of that hole is done at the same time or with reference to this face here. So what I'm thinking now is I'm gonna hold it actually by the body for the gland, so use a four jaw chuck. But there's not a lot to play on this. This is oversized by a mill or two, top to bottom as we're looking at it, but left to right, very little to play with. In fact, I may end up having to adjust the design because I don't think I'm gonna get away with machining these flat and getting the required dimension. Anyway, that aside, we'll come back to that later. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use a bit of a crude setup to transfer the shape of the gland body here onto the inside of the cylinder cover. And from that, determine roughly where the center is gonna be. And then I can set it up accordingly in the four jaw. With the center of the cover marked on the inside, I can now fit it into the four jaw I have cut the stub off the back because I don't need it and probably not good practice but I have put a slight centre punch in the centre plus or minus 0 0.02 or thereabouts so it would be more than good enough. I 
I have also positioned the cover so that it's standing slightly prior to the jaws so that I'm going to be able to turn the diameter. And of course to turn the register I just followed the same process as I did for the front covers. For the rear covers I need to drill and remount for the piston rods. Don's design calls out quarter inch diameter but I'll be running with 6mm and the key point here is that this hole is going to be drilled and reamed without having removed the cover from the fore jaw therefore I can be certain that the hole will be square with respect to the inside face. And I do a quick test with some 6mm silver steel rod. Perfect. And of course before removing the cover I do turn the diameter. To face off the outsides of the covers I've turned a mandrel which we can see here in the three jaw chuck. This is just a piece of 45mm bar which has been faced off and has a recess cut which is round about a half mil deeper than the register on the cover, but is quite a snug fit on the diameter. Bearing in mind, of course, that there is a very slight difference in the register diameter at 33.02 and 33.04 mil. As I've done previously, I am going to lock tight the covers into place on the mandrel, and maybe pushing my luck a little bit here. Certainly the first cuts to get through the skin on the casting are going to be quite heavy, and there is a possibility that the lock tight won't hold but I'm willing to give it a go. Well, no issues with that. So it's on with a bit of heat to drop it off the mandrel. Finishing off the outside of the rear covers is going to be a bit more difficult because of course they've got the piston rod hole and the body here for the stuffing gland. And amusingly or annoyingly, depending on one's frame of mind, we can see that my attempts to get the piston rod hole central to the stuffing gland body went horribly wrong on this particular cover. I'm pleased to say that the other cover, which we can see here now, is pretty much spot on. With so much more stick out on these rear covers, the risk of them popping off the mandrel is much higher but again, there's only one way I'm gonna find out. At this point, I'm only gonna be facing off the top of the body for the stuffing gland. The rest of it will come back to on the milling machine next. And again, I get no issues as I face this off down to 13.5 mil. With it faced off, I just need to open up the recess for the stuffing gland. I'm looking for an 11 millimeter diameter down to a depth of around about 9.5. Super accuracy is not required here. To complete the outside finish on the rear cylinder covers, I need to machine both the dimensions of the packing gland body and also bring down the thickness of the rest of the cover to four millimeters. To secure the covers, I've got a bit of mild steel bar firmly clamped into my machine vise. And into that I've drilled and tapped an M6 hole and fitted some threaded bar. I've roughly squared up the cover so that the packing gland body is aligned to the x-axis and I've used the wiggler to find the center of the cover using the outside diameter of the cover. With this setup it's just a case of working around the packing gland body to bring it into dimension and likewise with the thickness of the cover. And I'm working very much by the DRO in combination with taking measurements as I go along. I was a bit worried about my clamping arrangement, but it would appear that the workpiece didn't move, which can only be a good thing. 15.98.02 under, 30.93, so 0 0.07 under, oh, 4 mil bang on, 3.95, 0 0.05 difference. Not bad for a crappy old round column milling machine, 20 years old I think now as well. Despite my somewhat cocky finish to the last segment, I do have the issue of my asymmetric gland packing body to deal with. You can see the right hand side is significantly longer than the left hand side. 
the other cover is to the correct dimensions. So I've deliberately brought this side down to one and a half mil under size, a nice round number that I can deal with going forwards. Quite how I'm going to deal with it, I don't know yet, but we'll come back to that one later on. Otherwise, to finish the covers, I've got the mounting holes to deal with, and also the holes for the gland for the packing, which need to be put in the top here. For the cover bolt holes, I'm going to actually do that in position in the cylinder body, and we'll cover that off in the next video. And whilst I'm at it, I'll deal with the two holes for the packing gland. So on that almost cheerful note, I'll wrap up this video, and as always, say thanks for watching.